Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is Thursday, September 21st. Uh, we have the uh, Brookfield Select Board meeting for uh, today. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I see no announcements on the docket for today. Um, Brad, would you uh, read the signed warrants, please? Yeah, signed warrants, FY2406, accounts payable $454,095.82. FY2406, payable $199,349.07. FY2464, withholding $70,511.65. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to the agenda. The first item on the agenda is uh, the liquor license manager change for the Brookfield Rod and Gun Club. Um, is that what you're here for? That's me. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, why don't you come on up? Okay. Um, where you at? Uh, just right here. In, in that chair, please, because that way the, uh, the, the uh, 620. It's 620 right now. I'm going with it. Oh, okay. And uh, we will uh, oh, we will start the discussion at um, 6.18 by that clock. I do all my time by that clock, Dave. I think it's a, it's a little slower than my watch, but that, at least that way we're consistent. 6.20, six, six, six I can't. Oh, you're saying I have to wait until 6.20? Oh, okay. oh, fair enough. Well, no, by, but I just said I'm going by that official clock. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, no, no. Let's do what the official. Mine's a 620. Yeah, it's 620. I know, but I declared the meeting open based on that clock. That's so, and so to be, it's a, what? You're going to be in the past game? Yes. <laughs> Dear diary, today was the most amazing day. <laughs> I'm glad we can laugh about that. All right. Um, good for you. I, it's like, I think this will go a few more minutes. So uh, let's see, given that it's 19 minutes past, we'll, uh, we'll squeak it in. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And so, are, are you the new manager? I am. And who are you, by the way? I'm Tom. I'm Sharon O'Day. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Are you related to Shelby O'Day Hill? She would be my sister. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have um, the Brookfield Brown and Gun Club has been managed by Sue Ellen Grimes for years. Mm -hmm. years. Um, she has some health issues, and so I agreed reluctantly to. <laughs> Responsibility for um, for the bar. Um, it was paperwork was just filed, um, you know, just a, a few weeks back, and I've been acting as the bar manager for um, the last few months while she's been recovering. And um, yeah, so we're just making it permanent. Okay. All right. Uh, does anyone in the room have any uh, questions or concerns about the transfer of manager at Brookfield Rod and Gun Club? Uh, I do not. Brad, do you have any? No. All right. And make, make a motion to make the change. Is that to, to, to sign. I think we have to make a motion to sign the uh, form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I motion, motion to sign the form to, for the manager change to Sharon. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will second that. Um, all in favor of signing the uh, paperwork to uh, make Sharon the, uh, the lucky manager of the Brown Gun Club, please say aye. Aye. All right. That is approved. All right. Great. Thank you. That, Thank was, you. that was all. Let me see. Karen, can you just make sure I sign this? You got the sign here. Well, it, it is down there. Oh, okay. It got you. The board, it yeah, got the moved. Thank you. It's oh. rarely a single local license. Individual. All three. Yeah, it's all three, so I have to be doing them. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a majority that needs to sign with the license. Or with the license change. Ask that to Karen to make sure we didn't miss anything. All right. The uh, next item is the uh, central is the uh, Central Street reconciliations. And the account is not 
she's ill. Karen, and she Karen asked Shear could be that. If you could um, please postpone it, or we can email her. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. you can review it and email her with questions or postpone it. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Brad, we've got a light agenda today. Do you want to do, do you want to discuss this, or do you want to just um, try and make it even later and get out of here nice and early? I'm fine with postponing it. All right, nothing's going to change. I'm, I'm good with. I am good with that also. So, all right, then let's uh, let's defer this. Uh, Karen, can you put this on the agenda for the October fifth meeting? I will. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, the uh, timeline Apple Country Radio Transmitter Studio relocation. Sharon, that is you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a Rachel Beth this year for that? Uh, I'm not. Uh, We're not sure. Where I have Beth's not sure she's going to get offer call, and so we will um, move forward as it is. Okay, you have um, in front of uh, you. Hold on one moment, please. I'm sorry. Wait one moment. We hear someone in the hallway, ah. so that, that may be uh, arriving. Cool. Probably mm -hmm. Maybe not. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, they're not coming into the room, so let's resume. Okay. Um, you have in front of you my latest follow-up memo mm -hmm. with the timeline that was requested about what needs to happen when. Um, it's on the back of the, uh, the memo. And uh, this represents um, a timeline for things that would affect these spaces here. There's other things I have to do with the FCC, other things I have to do with equipment mm -hmm. um, and software and things like that that don't affect this building or Gavin. So I've left these off. This is just a basically an outline of what has to happen. Mm -hmm. I've also given you a um, some visual aids about the current um, set up for the antenna at Gavit, how it's wired in, mm -hmm. uh, what it looks like, how it's put into the building. The situation can be very similar to what I proposed here with the advice of some, some people on the uh, Town Hall Improvement Committee and also in consultation with my engineer. So there's a picture, the first page is um, showing the way it's set up now. Um, with the antenna at the peak of the, the far side of the building, the warehouse, mm -hmm. um, and then going through the eaves, coming out over the driveway, and then attached to the office, the former office building, and then um, from thence to the room where the transmitter is. And if you turn the page, there's a picture of the actual antenna and mount. Okay. And it shows it coming into the building at the peak in what used to be the nurse's office at Gavin. Um, they had to fortify the, um, the connection because that wall, if they had not, the, a good strong wind would have pulled the antenna right off the wall and part of the wall with it. So they reinforced the wall for me from the inside and mm -hmm. then they mounted the antenna, ran that cable, which is a half an inch in diameter, through the upper level of the building, into the eaves, and then out on page four. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a relatively fancy grommet that protect both the building and the cable at the bottom of that page. That's where the cable exits the building. It goes across the driveway, and then it goes into the office building on page five. Um, it's attached to the outside of the building, and then they loop excess around so that in case the cable expands and contracts, it will not damage the building. Mm -hmm. And then, if you turn the page again, it shows the grommet on the inside of the building with the cable coming in. And then the, the, uh, the picture at the bottom shows the back of the transmitter and where the cable connects to it. Um, and that transmitter is the size of a bread box, quite literally. It's uh, two rack units high. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think, 10 inches wide, um, 10 inches deep, and um, 19 inches wide. That would be a standard rack size. Yeah. And the blue unit below it is the Sage Digital Index. That is the box that transmits the FCC required um, emergency alert system. You've probably heard that if you listen to the radio for any length of time. This box will put it in automatically. You can also program it within a certain 15 minute interval if you want to not interrupt the program. If you don't do that, it will break into the programming and make the announcement. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I put the, the brief specs about the transmitter, uh, the model, the wattage, what the uh, what happens with the sig signal de degradation over the coax cable, and what the effective radiated signal uh, signal is, 100 watts. Um, and below the blue box, as we call it, are the two required um, radio receivers because those are the receivers where we get the SIG, the uh, emergency alert system from. Mm -hmm. And that is transmitted into the index. And then finally, as far as the photographs go, is a picture of the current clock tower showing the two antennas that are already on there. And as you can see on the bottom picture, the mount on the, the um, what we call a dipole antenna, the one that looks like a coat hanger, um, is very similar to the mount that we would be using on our antenna. Okay, and, uh, and the pictures are from different sides. That's correct. Okay. That's one cool. is from the, the uh, driveway side and the, the sunny one, and the, one, the other one is from the roof side. Mm -hmm. And where do you, in, do you know where it would, where on the tower it would be mounted? Well, as far as getting a bucket truck, there, truck up there would easier, it would be obviously the side from the driveway, but I would have to confer with Chief Martel's tech guy, just in case. Mm -hmm. um, and it would probably be mounted in the same fashion at the same level with a mass going up from there. Mm -hmm. And the next page is what we call a cut sheet, and it's basically a, um, a technical sheet showing the antenna and all of the specs for it. And it's a Shively model 681-2B. It's made especially for low power stations. It's very lightweight, but it does the job. Mm -hmm. And it's circularly polarized, which means the signal is sent out both horizontally and vertically, unlike a dipole antenna, which is just a vertical signal. And this way, it can go around buildings and around cars and through trees and so forth. So that's the information I wanted to provide in case there were any questions about that. I'm not good at remembering technical stuff, so I figured if you had it in hand, that would be better. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm asking is for a preliminary letter of approval so that I have something to show people, like at the FCC, mm -hmm. that we're finding a place for the studio, and that I can um, start working on this, uh, this cut list for um, the move from Gavit in time for December 30th. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, in, in your letter, it's the on the second page, there's items one through nine. That's correct. Which, which looks like a punch list. And one thing that I would like from you is um, timeline for things that you would uh, need in coordinating with the town. Like, for example, the, um, like, when do we need the lease by? Um, when, do, and then, I don't know what, and I'm not sure, it's like, just looking through here, like both upper rooms wired and internet nodes installed. So I expect you to be taking care of most of that, but do you need anything from the town other than authorization to run the uh, run oh, the wire? Well, underneath that, that list, it says, just reading from it, um, some of the above can be accomplished simultaneously, mm -hmm. um, working out with the MCC, the details with Chief Martel. But the linchpin to vacating the Gavit facility by December 31st is the lease. I can't begin any of those other steps without it. No, I, I understand. So that's how that works. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I think what, what she's saying, if I may interject, is that she can't give you dates because she doesn't know when she's getting the, the lease. <coughs> and once she has it, then she can give you dates to fill in this list. So it's on us to find out when we're getting the lease. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was. Um, I, I thought maybe that she would say, if we sign lease on this date, this is how it would work out in a preliminary schedule. But the date I'm looking for is ASAP, basically. Mm -hmm. Because we're going into October, three months, and I started this process with the board the beginning of this year, and this is how long it's taken just to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And I know the wheels of government grind small, but I'm hoping that once I get the um, the lease, the rest will come across very quickly because I won't be asking the board to, for example, paint the walls. I'll be doing a lot of this work myself as volunteers. Mm -hmm. But I need the lease first before I can plan the rest because I may have to adjust it if I get it later rather than sooner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just have a question about that? So when it comes to like the improvements, the wiring, the electrical, the painting of the walls, whose oversight to that? Is that Town Hall Improvement Committee then? Or the select board? 
Explain to me what you mean by oversight. She's volunteering to do no, all of the... No, I But I mean making sure, like, you know, the elect electrical stuff is... So our electrical inspector is the one doing the work. Okay. All right. With it, with his team um, from the school. So mm -hmm. that is not something that, that we would be necessarily overly concerned with because, and I, I think Beth brought that up at a previous meeting, that okay. because it's our own electrical inspector and he teaches and he knows the code, that we wouldn't be overly concerned with um, the installation of anything electrical in that matter. Okay. And other than that, it's cosmetic. It's painting and cleaning. Yeah, so. There is there is a matter of putting intern internet nodes in, and I would work that out later with the town. You know, um, the other thing that would have to be arranged for is I would have to ask Scott how the electricity, if it's plugged into the building um, and it's on the building's um, meter, what I would do to reimburse the town for any additional costs. You know, it's it's not a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, that could be part of the lease agreement. Yeah, that's exactly what that. I'm getting at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm paying for electricity at Gavin, um, and. I, uh, that's on a separate meter. Mm -hmm. So they know exactly what power I'm drawing. And it comes to between $190 and $150 a month. It's not a lot of, and that's because we have electric heaters in the building, because there's no heat in that building. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna have heaters in that built in that room. It's just mm -hmm. gonna be the electricity for the for the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth, the, the, the true endpoints, as it were, is I need the lease so I have an assurance that I'm going to be allowed to do this, and then I have to get stuff out of Gavin because they want the building vacated by the end of the year. And if I don't have the if I don't have the room upstairs available, I'll have no place to put that equipment. So mm -hmm. even just to store it for the time being until I get the renovation stuff. Mm -hmm. And to answer your other question, I hope to do that with the crew of volunteers, some of which I'm in the process of recruiting now. There's not a lot that needs to happen with that room outside of the wiring. I mean, it's in pretty good shape considering the work we had to, would have had to do with Gavin. A building with no heat, it had no exit in the engine, you know, exit signs, it had no emergency lighting. Um, the walls were dark and hadn't seen paint in 20 years. The rug needed, I mean, there was a ton of stuff that needed to be done with that space. That room upstairs is relatively pristine compared to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so, uh, Kelly, at our last meeting, the board has already uh, authorized the signing of this letter to, uh, to, to Sharon. Okay, so I can sign that right now. Yeah. Because there is that we've already authorized that action. So just one more one more bit of information. Um, the removal of the antenna off of Gavit and the installation here is going to be done by a group called Industrial Communications. Mm -hmm. They are they, they do towers. That's how you know how the type of work they do. So this is you know, this is like one day's work we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So are we looking for two leases, one for the antenna and one for the room? Or you could do that. Gavit has one lease for both. Well, that would be what I would, I would suggest. I was doing some research today at the suggestion. I, I would almost think about breaking it into two, only because if at some point you ever decide to move, you can maintain. That's a really good lease. point. Yeah, I was thinking that also. That maintaining two separate leases gives gives everyone the flexibility because the thought is. The studio may want to move somewhere else. The transmitters a lot more work to move because you have to do the RF engineering. That's yeah, a good place to have it for the town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and the transmitter, by the way, would not be in the room directly above that. It would be in the room above that. That little teeny room that's with the short flight of stairs going from the the stage right room. So if the, so, the studio will occupy stage right room. The transmitter will be upstairs from stage right. That's correct. So that if the, if the transmitter, if the studio were to relocate somewhere else, the stage right room would be available for other things, and the transmitter would still be That's exactly happy in its right. location. And all I have to do is put a lock on that door upstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so in my in my research um, today. I was speaking with a town administrator from Weston, and they actually have leases for multiple um, facilities that the town owns. And what they do when there's an emergency like this or there's something highly legally technical is they do a license to bridge the gap. So we can do a license immediately and then work out the terms of the lease. 
to bridge that time span, if that's something the board is inclined to do. And KP is the one who, de who developed the, the license to bridge this gap for leasing. What is the space. distinction between a license and the lease? Just the time frame? Or? So, giving her the right, essentially. To yeah, go. it, it basically it is is a short term um, permission to do something, whereas a lease is, is more long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it were a short term lease, I think it would be called that. No, but no, a it's lease not can't be for a month, right. but a license can be for a month. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. A I lease mean, has to be for a minimum of six months. Really? Um, and so if we're going to do a three-year lease, which is what was discussed at the previous meeting, but she needs it now and we don't have the terms to find at this point because we need more technical assistance, then a license could bridge that gap and give her the ability to do what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. In addition, it will give me time to work with the town and find out what they need for a lease mm -hmm. and get that information to them. Okay. That seems like that seems like a uh, prudent way to go. That way we can make sure the lease is uh, structured properly and isn't missing anything and doesn't have terms that we don't need or that might we, everyone might find onerous later on. In a short term license. Okay. All right. Um, before I forget, Karen. Yes. Do you need a copy of this signed letter before okay. Sharon gets it? I'm going to go right. right now. Thank you. So you've got it. I, I signed it and Karen will deliver it to you shortly. Okay. And uh, one of the things I intend to do is to keep um, this body apprised of every step I take that affects the property. Mm -hmm. So that you won't wonder what you want to do. Exactly what I'm going to be in doing tonight, even if it's something as minor as, say, cleaning the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That way, if you want to pitch in and help, you <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had an angle to that. Always. All right. Thank so, you, gentlemen. All right. So, uh, Kelly. Um, so we're we're going to have to decide how we want to handle the negotiation of the of the license and the lease. Whether we're going to appoint someone on here or appoint someone else to uh, to handle the negotiation. This is very dissimilar. This is more of a procurement issue. Um, you're agreeing to. You need to agree to a cost. Basically. So do you want to handle it? And and the terms. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. I will bring you the information and we'll be able to decide. Basically, I'm, I'm looking for similar situations um, with, in particular, with leases with no problems. To see what the typical terms are mm -hmm. and the process to get this done in a, in a quick way. Yes, in a way that reflects the um, general practices across the state. No, in a way that reflects the law. Well, hopefully, you know, <laughs> well, I, I guess I was presuming the general practices conform to the law, but that's yes. a great that is a great assumption. I'm gonna run with that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So so. Um, that, that's kind of where we're at right now. That okay. Because the last meeting was the one where you said she could use the vote herself. All right. So, do you need a vote from us authorizing the negotiation, or is that yes, something? please. All right, Brad. So moved. <laughs> um, a motion to offer the town administrator to negotiate a license and lease agreement terms on behalf of the board. It's like we have to hire an engineer to work on the specifics because the FCC is working exactly like that. To negotiate a license. I didn't use the license. That's what I was trying to say. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. All right, I will second the motion. Uh, any discussion, Brad? No. All right, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All right, um, Don. I think you had your hand up. Did you? Did we cover what you? No, I, I just asked Sharon a question about the location of the antenna. Okay, good. All right. I was hoping it was a little bit higher. She said it's slightly. It's it's up to the FCC actually. Um, we did get a response from the fire chief saying that that he has been informed.
film that any working with Sharon this whole time. He has no issue with the. With yeah. The yes, I, I, I uh, Sharon did share uh, Peter's email to her to that okay. effect. So I, 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 sure I had, I had seen that. Sharon, thank you for sending that, supporting that response from Peter. Like I said, it's, it's communication. So yes. No, it's, it's just good to know. Right. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a few questions here so the townspeople know what's actually going on here? Um, That's possible. Uh, uh, specifically about the um, the Apple Country Radio? Yes. Um, By May. Yes. Uh, let's see. I mean, other than the. Um, There's quite a few things here that uh, 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 the townspeople should be let them know what, what they're going to be paying for. Yes. Um, what they're going to be, you mean what's, well, there's, that hasn't been decided, Mr. Holcraft, because the lease and the license haven't been agreed to yet. We have, we have an agreement in principle. We have uh, issued a letter to Apple Country Radio uh, indicating our willingness to, um, to lease space in this building. And we have authorized the uh, town administrator to negotiate the particulars of this. But until the particulars are decided, there is no, there is no agreement to say who's going to be paying for what. What about heat? We're not, we're not, we're not eating that room up there right now. We are. Not the big room, we're not. Why would, yes. why would we be eating that room? Not them yet. Um, we well, eat excuse me, Kelly. Mr. Holcraft, if there is, um, if there is heat, we can, um, if there is heat, it's already up there. If there is no heat, then that can be addressed through the, through the license and the lease, where we can make sure that if they say, we can say no electric heaters. And that way we can, and that way we can ensure that they're not using electric power for that. I'm certainly not expecting them to use um, kerosene heaters up there or anything like that. Um, I, I, I understand your concern, but I think the appropriate time for these concerns is when we have an actual contract in front. Um, so that we can understand what's what's at issue, what's not. Otherwise, it's all hypotheticals. Like you're saying, what about heat? What about electricity? And, and so we understand about electricity, and I think the uh, the options there are to either arrange for them to have their own meter, or to up the, up the uh, rent on the lease to ensure that it covers the expected electricity cost. And we can work with them to make sure they're on a breaker that doesn't let them get way more than what we're expecting them to get in the agreement. I think they have a good handle on what power so, they need. So the town's not going to be spending any money on this on this room at all? There's not going to be any, uh, anything else going on? I heard there's, there's going to be money used from some uh, some grant or something. Yeah, I forget the name of it. Um, I believe that we are we have authorized money for improvement of the, what's that room upstairs, the ballroom? Or what else? Yeah, but we were paying the ballroom, but not that area. No, I, I know, but my, my point is that it, yeah, it's like. That's what I want to know. The, well, what's that? What's that? Yeah. My, that's the other one. Yeah, the other one. No, that's not going to be used on that room, is it? No, nothing, nothing beyond the doors. It's just in the actual ballroom. Yeah. And it's the walls and the ceiling and the ball and the balcony yeah. and the balcony yeah. and behind the stage. Okay, one is uh, right. Okay, what about the our insurance company about the antenna in that clock tower? I mean, that's I think that should be addressed. It will be in the lease. Would be too late we've already got the lease made up at the time. No, 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 that's part of that's part of writing the lease. Yeah. Is understanding these that they have to hold a certain amount of insurance to indemnify the town. So you get that base covered. Yes. How about having a, a non-profit organization? Hold on, hold on. Let's save this discussion for when there's a lease to review. So offline, yeah. offline, out of this meeting, I'd be happy to talk to you, Dave, about your concerns, and we can make sure that they are shared with Kelly so that I, I expect okay. nothing will slip by her. Now, I understand your concern, but I think this room right now, this is, this is not the right venue for your concern. I don't want to shut you down. No, no, no. I'll just, you I want to make sure it's done ahead of time before you have a final lease in front of you. That's, that's okay, and, that's, and, and, and so, I just, so let's talk about it after the meeting. Okay. And that way, that's if you have any concerns, I, we can make sure that they're on Kelly's radar and she can make sure that the lease re reflects them or she can tell us why she she, uh, she can share with us why she thinks it's not a, it's not something we need to, re to handle through the lease. Is that, uh, is that fair? Yeah. All right, thank you. I think so. Good. As long as it's discussed before something's finally being stoned. Mm -hmm. We will be um, we will be reviewing uh, the select board will be reviewing and discussing the lease at a future meeting because we have to have it on the agenda in order to sign it 
and at that point, the lease will be a public document, it will be available for people to review, and at that point, if you do have specific concerns, um, that would be uh, your final opportunity to bring them up. All right, monthly reports carrying on. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking that this is this is something where I wanted to come up with a uh, guidelines for when we wanted our departments to submit their monthly reports. I know that after I had this brilliant idea, I found that the uh, Chief Blanchard is um, at the mercy of when he gets reports from dispatch in New Braintree. So it's not practical to hold him to a schedule when he has um, no control over some of the source information. Um, at the moment, the highway department is down two people, and so, and I would like him to focus on, and it's like, I don't want to overly uh, distract him from getting stuff done. Um, so, and uh, Peter, since, since, since you're here, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll take advantage. We were, the discussion was just saying, it's like, um, for the fire department, um, the monthly reports, is there a time frame in which you, you feel comfortable committing and saying, for the August report, I could get it to you by the 20th, of, or for any month, I get it to you by the 20th of the following month. Is, and if you want to think about it, that's fine, because I'm just okay. popping it on you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if, if I've got a deadline or a target, it actually makes it easier because it comes off of an eventuality thing to, I can do it this time. Yeah. And, and it gives you a focus. And, 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 that's, and that's one of the reasons I thought to, to, to discuss this was to say, if we gave the departments a, a, we'd like it in by this time, it would give them the focus to get it done. So, all right, so my, my ask to you is if you could have it done to, uh, to us, could you have it done to, for us in time for our second meeting of the month, which is the third Thursday, so it would be the 15th yeah. to the 21st. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, and then for, and I think Would for, this be for fire and EMS or just fire? Um, let's see. I don't know if the data is, is it as readily available. Yes. Uh, well, I would say, uh, Peter, um, that would be for fire. Um, do you think that do you, uh, do you think Donna could uh, meet that same schedule? Would you would she want would you want her to speak for her? I can let her know that that's it, it'd be a similar thing. And then, yeah, if we're given the deadline. It just moves it up on the radar front, and we'll get to it too. We'll get it done. Okay. Then uh, why don't why don't we ask why don't we communicate that to Donna in the sense of. Um, that this is what we'd like. If it's if it's uh, difficult for you or you or you foresee trouble, let's talk about it. And that way, it's like I don't want it to come down. I don't want her to see it as a mandate since she hasn't had a chance to comment on it. Okay. All right. And then for Ryan, it's like I just got to I want to set up a schedule with him, but I think right now it's a uh, with his shorthandedness, it's going to be tough for him. But maybe we need to get that done just so we can see how much work he's doing and how much. You understand that Lindsay does these reports, right? You're right. She, all right, then. Thank you for the reminder. I mean, they are very shorthanded, but I found. I think Lindsay, Lindsay. Lindsay still is managing right. very well with the, right. the administrative end. Then let's. Uh, I don't know what, what she needs as a source though from Ryan. So yeah, that's, it's that's her, just something yeah, to keep. Yeah, she, it's like she's not shorthanded, but she might have trouble getting the necessary information out of Ryan. Perhaps. It's like Ryan. I, I don't know how to right. work why don't we, of that office. So for Ryan, why don't, why don't, for Highway, why don't we ask for the um, in time for the third Thursday of the month also, so that we could then expect to review the fire, EMS, and highway reports at that meeting. And we can ask, we can ask Lindsay if that's something. That, we can ask Lindsay if that's something she thinks that she and Ryan could produce. Or actually, last one. Should we ask Ryan or Lindsay? I'm trying to think. Ryan's department. We should ask Ryan. I get to the right answer eventually, with a little help. All right. Um, Brad, any any thoughts? I'm doing all the time because no, no, it's kind of my issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think we need, I think we need a motion to um, to ask for the department heads for this. Do we need a motion, or is that just something we can? You you it would, it's always better to have a motion. All right. Do a motion. So make a motion to have fire, EMS, police, and not police because oh, it's at the mercy okay. of the. 
fire EMS and highway to have their monthly reports to us by the third Thursday of the month. Are they the only departments that do monthly reports? Do we get one from sanitary or water? I think water provides one to the water commissioners, correct? We do. We have a monthly meeting. We do not necessarily do a separate report. Okay, I didn't know, that's why I'm asking. I don't think I've ever seen a water report come past this board. Yeah, well, they have a commission, so. Yeah, and, and so it makes sense that that, they're, that the dentist's reports would go to his commissioners. Yeah. We, get a, we get a monthly uh, briefing and update from the superintendent as to the operations. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't ask him to file a report. Well, yeah, if you get a monthly briefing, that's good enough, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, rather than ask the department heads to come in, we ask for the report. Okay. So, did you make the motion, Brad? Or, uh, yes. you, made, you made the motion, so fire, EMS, and highway, ask them to provide the report by the 21st, and if that's, uh, let's see. All right, I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, um, Karen, when you communicate that, um, let them know that if they do feel that it's a problem, to let us know. And I, I would also say that if they feel they're not going to make it in a month, if they could um, let us know that they're not going to make it and when they expect to get it. That way, if they can't do it, at least they say, I'm going to have it done on this date. Okay. And we'll see how that works. All right, uh, signed state primary warrant. Is that our new vote tabulator over there? That is our new vote. Well, that's the box that holds the vote tabulator. I believe the brain is locked up somewhere else safer. Okay. Well, I saw the locks on the case cover, so I thought maybe the brain... It might be contained within. Mm -hmm. The brain might be in there. Right. They were doing a training on it today. all three you have to sign. All right. Well, that's not here, so can we just be the two of us? Yeah, but I mean, all, all three pages. Okay, but okay. Oh, oh there are three pages. Got yeah, it. there's three originals. I mean, three Got originals, it. right? All right. So this is the warrant for the primary election on October 10th, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. here at Town Hall. Um, uh, I believe the only matter on there is the primary for the um, the state senate for and the seat vacated by Ann Gobi. Uh, let's see, so Brad, can I, get a, can I get a motion to sign this? Make a motion to sign the uh, state senator primary warrant. All right, I will second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Resignation, Caitlin Servant from the Advisory Committee. Uh, let's see. She's in Florida, fucking her. Or she's on her way, I should say. Uh, so I would uh, accept. We, do we need to vote or can I just accept her resignation? No, you don't need to vote because she doesn't actually need permission to quit. So that's <laughs> you can okay, accept that's it that's with, with regrets right. and thank her for her service okay. because she did a great job. Now we, she worked very, very hard on the advisory. I, I worked with her her entire term there, so we uh, we do accept it with regret, thank, and we thank her for her service. And see, uh, next, uh, approved select board minutes from 6, 14, 19, and 9, 7, 23. Uh, let's see, so for uh, 6, 14, 19, Karen, those were emailed earlier today? Yeah, I, I reviewed those. Did you review the current version? I reviewed one version that was sent. No, that's the only one he's talking about. But the new one, yes, I gave I gave them all copies right now, and I also sent it. He, did, I never sent him. I sent it to you first, so they never saw it. They only saw the correct version. Okay. Oh. Wait, wait. Well, yeah. well, right, right now we're talking about the. I'm, I'm talking right now. I'm focusing on six fourteen nineteen. Right, were there any corrections to those meeting minutes? Uh, no. Okay. No corrections. Okay. Good. That's what those were all. So. All right. Um, Brad, did you refuse to meet? I don't know. I sent you the online. Um, I sent you the online. Did I send you the online? You sent me some from 518 or something. Yeah, those have been put in the next time. Okay. All right. That's good. Next time. Okay. 
So Brad, can I get a motion for the 614-2019 minutes? Uh, make a motion to approve the 614-19 minutes. All right, uh, second, all in favor say aye. 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 And then for the um, for the 9723, the corrected ones are the ones with the 99 date on top, September 9th? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Brad, any, uh, 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 about, we need to correct. No, it's just yeah. the date, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'll take a motion. If, if I read the minutes, I yeah. don't have any issues. Yeah. So I'll take a motion to uh, approve the minutes with the corrected with a with the date corrected. So moved. All right. Second. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. All right. And we've got the police department report. Have you seen this or? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to look at it. It's not. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Take a motion to accept the report. Make a motion to accept the police department monthly report for June. All right, second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Wait, uh, we got course. Let me let me go through the correspondence. Okay. It's like it's like it's going. It's seven o'clock. We're almost out. We're out of here in less than an hour. All right. Um, there isn't any. Oh, there is no correspondence. This is I'm just below correspondence is the meeting accommodation center. Yes. I thought that was the correspondence. Did you put right. about recording meeting again? Oh shoot! I forgot to mention. Um, for those in the room, the meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, can you make sure that gets into the announcements for um, on a standing basis yes, going forward? Thank you. Because I'm not going to remember it. I'm so busy wondering if, if which side is my better side today, my right or my left. <laughs> All right, Brad, can you see us out? Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. All in favor adjourn, say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 6.57.